So you might have noticed that I started off the section talking about how we could have complex roots, but I haven't actually talked about complex roots yet. Um, that's because, well, they can be kind of complex. So we have this conjugate root theorem, and you might remember us talking about conjugate numbers in um, the last section, or maybe it was the section prior, whatever section we talked about complex numbers in, right? And if that's if I have a, compl have a complex number a plus bi, then its conjugate is a minus bi, right? I just changed the sign in the middle. So if a polynomial has a complex zero z, then um, the complex number, just trying to figure out how I want to word this, the complex number z star, that is the conjugate of z, is also a zero of f of x. So if z is a root, then its conjugate is also a root, right? If like, actually you'll see it right in a second, right? But if like 2i is a root, then so is negative 2i. 1 plus 3i is a root, so is 1 minus 3i. Spoiler alert, because that's what we need for this example here. Um, given that 1 plus 3i is a complex zero of the polynomial given, find all of the other zeros of f. There are two methods here, which is why I'm doing this in a separate video, because otherwise um, the other video would have been really long. I have two methods here, and they both have their own sets of challenges. So method one is to use long division. Because we know that, well, 1 plus 3i is a complex 0, which means I know that x minus 1 plus 3i is a factor. Well, I also know that x minus its conjugate, 1 minus 3i, is a factor. And I can do long division by turning this into a smaller polynomial that is a factor of f with real coefficients. So this is when things get kind of messy. Because I'm going to rewrite this as x minus 1 minus 3i, and then x minus 1 plus 3i, and I need to do some multiplication. So we get x minus x squared minus x plus 3i x minus x plus 1 minus 3i minus 3i x plus 3i minus 9i squared, so plus 9. These cancel out. These cancel out. I'm left with x squared minus 2x plus 10. I'm praying I did that correctly. Well, now I have a factor, and I know that it is a factor of f, right? Because if the individual factors are factors, then the product is also a factor. And I realize I'm saying factor a lot. Um, but I can now go through and divide. So x cubed goes, or x squared goes into x cubed, x times. I get to multiply through um, minus 2x squared. Um, plus 10x. I don't know why I froze on that. Multiply through, or sorry, subtract. So I'm going to get negative 3x squared plus 6x. I'm going to bring down the 30. Negative x squared goes into negative 3x squared, negative 3 times. Multiply by this. I subtract. Get 0. So my other zeros, well, my full factorization now includes this x minus 3. So if x minus 3 is a 0, then the other 0 is positive 3. So my zeros are 1 plus or minus 3i and 3. This one has its own challenges because this whole multiplication step is a colossal pain in the butt, and so is long division. It just gets messy. It's hard to keep straight. It's hard to keep track of things. It just gets messy. 
Well, I'm not saying that method two is any less messy, but synthetic division is a little bit more palatable. Even if we do it with complex numbers, I think it'll go a little bit better. So we can do synthetic division with complex numbers, and it's not going to be pretty, but it is going to work. We just have to be really careful to be really meticulous here. And it's not a bad idea to do some side work and do your multiplication like in the margin. So that way you know you're doing this correctly. So I'm going to add, I'm going to get negative 4 plus 3i. And I'm going to multiply. And I am going to do my multiplication off in the margin as best as I can here. So I'm just going to slide this over. All right, so I want to do 1 plus 3i times negative 4 plus 3i. This is going to give me let's see, negative 4 minus, I'll show you what I'm doing here, negative 4 plus 9i squared, so minus 5, minus 9. Actually, it'll be easier if I just write it out all this way. I'll do the foil first instead of trying to do it in my head. Bad things happen when you try to do these kinds of things in your head. Minus 13 minus 9i, so let me put that back in here now. Three minus nine i. And we're off to do some side work again. So again, I'm just gonna write the four link out. I'm not gonna try to do this in my head. Plus nine i. Um, that looks like what? Minus 27 i squared says so plus 27, I get 30. It's really nice. It's not the right color. I get zero, so I know it's a factor. Well, I can do this again, remember? Again, let me try to push my long division work in a little bit. So I just have some more room. Because one minus three i is still also a complex zero. So we need to repeat our work here with my other factor, my conjugate zero. Bring down, multiply, add. This one gets a little bit easier because everything should ultimately cancel out. All right, with that second, with that conjugate zero, you should see a lot of the complex, sorry, the imaginary parts of the complex number canceling out. And it does, which is nice. It makes my life a lot easier. So my quotient, again, is x minus three, which tells me that's also a factor. So it tells me that x equal to three is a zero. And my zeros, are one plus or minus three i and three. I think the synthetic division work is a little bit easier just because I am more inclined to just do synthetic division. That's just my inclination. Um, but it is a little bit hard if you struggle with like organization and spacing um, to really keep that multiplication nice and neat. So they both have their struggles. You'll find a method that's easier for you. Personally, I think it's synthetic division. Um, but, you know, try them both out, see which one you think is better.